Welcome to It Is Written Canada. Thank you for joining us. We are in the Philippines in a very remote barangay by the name of Salvation or Salvation uh, in English. And it's quite an appropriate name, but we are here with Steve Matthews, who is the CEO of Adra Canada, and also Teresa Ferreira, who is with Philanthropy and Marketing for Adra Canada. And they're gonna share with us uh, some things about this location. Steve and Teresa, thank you so much for inviting us with you on this journey. It was quite a road getting up in this mountainous region. The pathway was so small and we were like, oh, are the wheels even going to fit yes? And so I can understand why they couldn't come up. We couldn't come up in a van. So they had to send a four by four to take us up into this village of here. So thank you once again for inviting us to join you. Yes. Yeah, it's great to have you with us as well. Mm -hmm. Steve, is there perhaps a story behind the name Salvation, the name of the village? I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not saying it properly, but in English it sounds like Salvation, it's spelt that way. So Salvation is uh, the barangay and speaking with the captain of the this uh, barangay, the captain is kind of like the, the head elected official for the community. They were sharing that because of the location of the community, that's how it got its name because it's in an area that's really not very susceptible to whether it's uh, you know tsunamis or flooding landslides it's just kind of that area of, of salvation and uh, they're they feel very protected because of where it's located but this village is so remote mm -hmm. how do they make a living here like how do they get all their supplies their food how do they manage being so far away from any close by cities. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you ask that question because being so remote, you wonder what sustains this village, right? This barangay. And so they have three ways here in Salvashan that they do that. Um, the first way is if you look around, we're sitting in a coconut grove. And so coconuts is their first source of livelihood. Their second source of livelihood is from abaca. I don't know if you saw as we traveled up here, there were these long, fibrous looking hairs that were draped over lines. And so that's called abaca. And they utilize that to sell. So that's their source. But then how it's utilized out in the market is for clothing, filling mattresses. So that's their second source. Their third source of income, if you look around, you'll see rice fields. And so those are those three sources of income. I know that um, it's an amazingly beautiful vegetation as you look around. And so you see how they've really utilized their surroundings to thrive as a community. You know, what also amazes me is how industrious they are. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these processes, even to get the fibers off that banana plant, that's hard work to do that. Yeah. And to harvest the coconuts and the rice, I mean, all of that is hard work and they're so industrious, working together as a community, children are involved. And so it's so amazing to see how hardworking and dedicated mm -hmm. these people are. And one of the big parts of, of this project, I know that we're going to look into it, is a school where they're actually, Adra is teaching within the school and teaching agriculture. Yeah, and that uh, agriculture, what we're doing is able to work within the curriculum of the school. One of the teachers that's there is kind of been trained as an agricultural specialist. So he's teaching the grade four to six classes about ways to grow uh, different, uh, different types of crops from native crops that they have to some other introduced crops that, to, that have been brought in as well. But it's, uh, it's able to feed you know, the, the participants in the program and they even shared with us that they can even sell a little bit uh, extra to those that aren't part of the program as well. Mm. I'm looking forward to talking to them. Yeah, absolutely. What else is Adra doing in this little village? So uh, in this village, Adra's been here for a number of years. We started with the Embrace Project and now into Together. We've done things such as uh, even like emergency response, providing some building materials to help after a, a typhoon had hit the area. During COVID, we were, uh, we were present in the area to be able to provide and deliver food because people weren't able to get it to work. Um, and also we've got bowl salons, kitchen gardens. So there's a number of different activities that we've been uh, helping with in the community throughout. 
Thank you so much for telling us about the projects that Adri is doing in this village. Let's go and meet some of the people. Absolutely, yes. let's go. We are visiting now with Josefa Seprioto and she is the leader, the head, the barangay captain, they say, here in Salvation. And uh, we're gonna just learn something about her village. Uh, Josefa, thank you for being willing to share with us and welcome us into your village. Welcome. <laughs> Josefa, tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> I was born and grew up in another village, not too far from here. It was after I got married that I moved here. This is my husband's home village, and we decided to raise our family here in Salvacion. Josefa, you have been elected as the barangay captain here in um, Salvacion, and people have elected you not just once, but three times. <laughs> Tell us about what you do as the head of this village. The people living here in Salvacion are poor. They don't earn much from their farms, and the cost of goods are high. I do my best to make sure that everyone in the village is able to access the basic services that they need. I visit each home and ask them, what do you need? And I do my best to connect them with help from the government or ADRA. ADRA has actually been a very big help as I do my work in helping the people of Salvacion. Yosefa, we heard that when ADRA first came to many of these villages, they didn't want to accept help from ADRA. Why did you choose to accept help from ADRA? They had heard that ADRA was a faith-based organization, and they were afraid that if they accepted ADRA's help, they would be pressured into becoming Adventist Christians. I asked the ADRA worker about that, and they told me that ADRA did not work that way, that they were just coming to help people with education support for a better life. We decided to partner with ADRA, and it has been a real blessing. ADRA has helped us in so many ways over the years. They have taught us many things about nutrition, how to raise healthy children, and how to grow organic vegetables. They provided us with things like garden tools and pots and pans to cook the food that we grew. They helped everyone install toilets right by their homes. They helped us with food during the pandemic and building supplies after a typhoon ripped off many roofs. The surrounding villages that turned down ADRA are now regretting their decision. They are jealous of all the help that we have received. It has been over six years now and ADRA keeps working to help us. They have demonstrated that actions truly do speak louder than words. Yosefa, we understand that in December 2020, there was a typhoon that hit this area right in the middle of COVID. How did ADRA help you then? Raleigh was a very bad typhoon, one of the worst that I have seen. We are usually safe up here in the mountains, but this storm destroyed many homes. Fortunately, we have designated shelters, and we got through with no loss of life. But the damage to homes was great. After the storm was over, ADRA rolled in with plywood, roofing sheets, tools, and other building supplies. It was really amazing. They came without our even asking or expecting them. They helped us rebuild. Our people were so happy for the help. It can be devastating to lose your home. ADRA came and provided people with new hope. I believe that ADRA was really God's answer to our prayers. God used ADRA to help our community recover quickly. Josefa, it sounds like your village is appropriately named as Salvation because people lived through a typhoon, through a pandemic. There was no loss of life here in this village during any of those, and people didn't even get COVID. It sounds like 
ADRA was a real blessing to the people of Salvation. When you talk to the people around your village, what do they say about ADRA? The people here will never forget ADRA for the help they have received. ADRA is still working here, now with the TOGETHER project. Every time ADRA comes, the people here drop everything they are doing to participate in the training. They welcome ADRA with open arms. They know that when ADRA comes, ADRA comes to help. I believe that ADRA is God's way of helping the people of Salvacion. God is helping us through ADRA. We are currently in the home of Kimberly Ebuenga, who is a resident and ADRA participant here at Salvation. Kimberly, thank you so much for having us in your home. You're welcome. Kimberly, tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born and raised right here in this mountain barangay. I finished high school and started studies at college, but was not able to finish my degree. My husband has been my friend since childhood. We grew up together. We got married and have had three children together. So, Kimberly, you were childhood friends, you and your husband. Yes. This is such a beautiful village. Tell us what you like about living over here in Salvation. I love living up here in the mountains. It is a little far from any large city, but I think it is one of the reasons why I like it. It is clean with no pollution. It is a simple and comfortable life. Kimberly, how do people make a living here? Some of the major livelihoods here are coconut farming and abaca farming. Some of the people here make brooms out of tiger grass. We've heard a little bit about abaca. Can you tell us more about abaca? Abaca is a lot like a banana plant. It is grown for the fibers that can be harvested from the stalks. They take a section of abaca and pull fine strands of fiber from them. After drying in the sun, these strands can be used to make many different things like ropes, clothing, fishing nets, carpets, even paper. Kimberly, how long have you been a participant of the ADRA activities? Were you involved with the EMBRACE project as well? Yes. I started attending the ADRA training sessions about six years ago when the EMBRACE project started here in Salvation, and I am now also involved in the TOGETHER training sessions. What are some of the things that you learned participating in the EMBRACE program and the TOGETHER project? I think one of the most helpful things that I have learned from the ADRA sessions has been the information on safe motherhood. Embrace taught us how to have a safe pregnancy and how to raise healthy babies and children. When I grew up, I learned many traditional beliefs that were actually not very healthy. For example, a traditional belief was that a mother should not let her newborn baby have the first breast milk that comes. It was believed that it is dirty and the baby would get sick. Adra taught us that colostrum is very important for the baby to get a good start for a healthy life. They taught us that for the first six months, a baby should be fed breast milk exclusively. Before that, the mothers here were switching to food and water by three months. We believed that powdered milk was healthier than breast milk. ADRA helped us understand that breastfeeding was the best. Kimberly, I'm so glad that ADRA is informing you of the correct information because it's crucial 
like for instance colostrum if your baby doesn't get colostrum they can actually be really unhealthy so that part of that first milk that's produced is very very important for your baby and so I'm so glad that Adra has come in and educated you with the correct information mm, it's like de demystifying all of these traditions uh, which have are, are actually very harmful and now you've got that that correct knowledge and that is very empowering to you. Kimberly, it looks like Adra has taught the people here a lot about nutrition and how valuable that is, especially to the mother and the children and everyone in the community, of course. Has Adra helped in any way to provide that nutrition? Yes. Adra had many training sessions on how to grow organic vegetables right around our homes. This makes it very easy to access when cooking for our children. Before Adra came, I was not really growing anything. I bought everything from the market. We did not have a very balanced diet. But once Adra taught us the basics of having a kitchen garden, I became hooked. Adra gave us tools and seeds to get started. Once I saw those first few plants growing, I became inspired to grow more and more. Now, our house is surrounded with herbs and vegetables. Now I am able to feed my children fresh vegetables every day, and it doesn't cost us anything. Can you tell us, Kimberly, about other, um, other knowledge that you received from ADRA that has really helped you as a mother or maybe helped other uh, young people. The Embrace Project taught us how to have healthy children. And now the Together Project is teaching the youth of the village how to get through their teen years in a healthy and responsible way. Together talks a lot about the importance of good hygiene, the importance of staying in school, and how to avoid teenage pregnancies and early marriage. But the Together Project is not just for the teens. There are group sessions for adults as well that are covering some important and sensitive issues. For example, Together has had a lot to say about the importance of basic human rights. In the sessions, we have discussed gender-based violence, domestic violence, gender roles, and gender equality. We have learned about the importance of being accepting and inclusive, how everyone in the village should be given the same respect and opportunities. We discuss how it is wrong to bully or discriminate against someone just because they might seem a little different than us. The Together Project has really done a lot to help people become more sensitive and less critical of other people in the village. Kimberly, thank you so much for having us here in your home and for sharing what is on your heart. We really appreciate being here in your home today. Thank you. And I would just like to also say thanks to ADRA, ADRA Philippines and ADRA Canada for everything that they have done here. If it was not for ADRA coming to teach us, we would still be following our traditional beliefs. We would be living in the same way we have always have. God bless you for We are now visiting in the home of Mary Cho Perico, who is a participant uh, in the Adra programs, also a facilitator, was once, and is also the secretary for this barangay. Mary Cho, thank you for welcoming us into your home and being willing to share uh, your story with us. Okay, welcome and thank you. Mary Cho, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Mary Cho. I am married and we have five children. My husband is a coconut and abaca farmer, and I work as a secretary for our barangay. I am also a student. So, Maricho, you mentioned that your husband is an abaca farmer and he also does coconut farming. What kind of income does that provide for your family? We make about 30,000 pesos per year. 30,000 pesos yeah. a year. Is that 
enough for you to go to school? Because you mentioned that you're studying at university. How are you managing financially to be a student as well? Not enough for... No, it's not really enough. Life is hard for our family. I do make some money as the secretary of the village, but it's difficult to raise five children on the small income we make. It is one of the reasons I have gone back to school so we can have a better life. Fortunately, I am getting some assistance from the government and other organizations to help cover the tuition fees. There have been times when it has become overwhelming to juggle everything, and I have been tempted to give up my studies. But I have a dream of finishing so that I can get a good job to help provide a better life for my children. Maricho, it is really admirable that you are pursuing and continuing with your education, even though you are in a situation that you can't afford it financially and you're taking care of five children. So just to pursue your dream, you are pushing through and you're so determined and that is really admirable, isn't yeah, it? That's incredible, mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. Thank you. Mary Jo, when did you first hear about ADRA and why did you decide to become involved in ADRA? Because not everyone decides. You made a choice to become involved. Why did you do that? Okay. Before I took the position as Barangay Secretary, I was the Barangay Nutrition Scholar. It was when I was holding that position that ADRA first approached our Barangay to do the Embrace Project here. When I found out that there was a component that would teach the people how to develop organic gardens right close to their home, I was all for it and promoted it to the village council. Maricho, do you have your own kitchen garden? Yes, I have one in my backyard and actually all around our house. But our lot is small and it is not really large enough to grow enough food to feed our large family, so I have another plot in a community garden. It's great because not only is the food we grow fresh and organic, it's saving us a lot of money each month. Maricho, you've been involved, as you mentioned before, with kitchen gardens and also with a community garden. And how did that influence your decision to go and study um, Permi Agricultural and do what you're studying now as a student? Originally, it was my plan to study to become a nurse, but after the training that I received from ADRA on organic farming, I changed my mind and decided to study agriculture, which is a bit of relief for me because I don't like needles. When I saw firsthand how people can turn unused land into a source of healthy nutrition for their families, I was inspired. We learned how to make natural pesticides and natural fertilizers. This made gardening not only cheaper to do, but also made the vegetables healthier to eat. Now, with the degree that I am taking in college, I will be able to take a lot of these same methods to other villages and help many people provide better nutrition for their families. Maricha, you've learned a lot from Adra Canada with regards to kitchen gardens and organic compost and fertilizers. What else have you learned from ADRA Canada that has benefited your family? ADRA has taught us a lot about child development, which has been very helpful. The ADRA trainings went beyond just advice on balanced diets and good nutrition. It also encouraged us to build strong relationships with our children. ADRA has also taught us how to manage our household finances and even set up a small savings and loans group here in our village. We have never had any kind of banking system here in Salvation. Now we can save and have access to small loans when we need them. ADRA provided us with tools for our gardens and helped us after the hurricane. They also helped us install comfort rooms that have really improved sanitation for the whole village. Mary Cho, you mentioned the comfort rooms, which to us is, is a bathroom. Um, so they have been built here in the community. What's the difference between uh, like what it was like and what it is now after those were built by ADRA in your community? Before the comfort rooms were installed, there was a lot of poop everywhere. People were supposed to use plastic bags, but many did not, especially the children. 
some of us would wait until after dark and go into the forest to have some privacy. But when it is raining and dark, that was not always safe. Adra helped 42 families here install a comfort room right by their house or in their house. The whole village is much cleaner now. People are very grateful to have the comfort room. Maricho, Adra Canada has been very involved in salvation for the last six or seven years. When you and your friends speak together and visit together, what are your thoughts about Adra Canada? Adra has really proven itself here. They have been here now for over six years. They have helped anyone who wants help. Adra did not require any fees to attend their workshops. They provided us with many material things like tools and the comfort rooms without any costs. They did not discriminate in any way based on religion or try to get us to change our religion. For me, that is a big thing. Families who did not sign up at first are now regretting their decision and asking to join. Maricho, thank you so much for inviting us into your home. And Mark and I just want to encourage you to continue studying and to pursue your dreams. And we want to wish you well in it and know that we are going to be praying for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Thank you very much to come in and advise me and to pursue my studies. So thank you so much. Friends, if you have been inspired by the mission and passion of ADRA Canada and would like to contribute to their work in the Philippines and around the world, then here's the information you need. Before you go, we would also like to invite you to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also listen to our podcasts. And if you go to our website, you can see our latest programs. You too can experience the fullness of life found in the words of Jesus when he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Thank you.